As you know, today we will be talking about our Savior Jesus Christ as he talks to us in the book of John, chapter 10, but I will be able to call it a survey of the book of John. And they are bringing to us something that is so dear to John about Jesus talking about Christ as the chief shepherd. And I invite you today that you will be able to go with me that we may survey the book of John chapter 10. And in the survey of John chapter 10, I think you can, if it's not ready, you can come back later. Please, you can come back later. The topic of our sermon is safe in his hand. Safe in his hand. And it is coming to us from the verse that has been read, but we first read from verse 1 through 9. Verse 1 through 5. John chapter 10, we read from verse 1 through 5, and it says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Verse 4, and when he brings out his sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will free, flee from him, for they do not know the voice of a stranger. We may pause. Here, John is elaborating to us what Jesus was telling the Pharisees. It is good to understand who Jesus is talking to here. And why would Jesus bring this story? We get it from the previous chapter that Jesus did a miracle and opened the eyes of a man who was born blind. After opening the eyes, the Pharisees come and say and tell that man, praise God, give God glory, this man is a sinner because he has healed you on a Sabbath day. But this man is telling the Pharisees, what I know, a sinner cannot do something like that. Then they rebuked him. You are also a sinner. And then Jesus, after that, meets this man, because they are separated. Jesus meets this man and tells this man, would you want to know the Son of God? Then the man said, who is he that I may be able to believe? Then Christ told him, he is the one who is talking to you. The man worshipped Jesus. After worshiping Jesus and the Pharisees rejected Jesus, Jesus comes to them and tells them, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door and climbs on any other side, the same is a thief and a robber. Why was Jesus talking about the sheep and the sheepfold here, and the door. It, it was always known 
that in the, in the ancient times, like uh, 3000 BC, around that time, from 3000 BC, it was always known that a shepherd, kings and religious leaders were shepherds. And sometimes they would call them that the shepherd is a humble shepherd or the shepherd is a righteous shepherd. So the king is righteous. The king is humble. The king is doing well. So the, the shepherd was used inter interchangeably with a leader or a king. And then it was known that now through that there is a door of entering the heart of the people. So Christ is telling them that I am the door. And anyone who wants to get into the lives of the children of God, I am the door. And then anyone who would want to take the sheep and would want to go to any other way, through any other way, that one is a thief and a robber. Anyone who would want to go through the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So he's telling them, if you want to enter into life, if you want to lead my people also, you need to go through the door. That is why uh, this verse is saying, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. He who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Next to that, it says, to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. Christ is saying that that man who is coming through the door, the doorkeeper will open. Now, the question would be, who is the doorkeeper now? You know, in, in a metaphor, there would be many debates, yes. But seemingly here you find that to that person, the Holy Spirit opens the door. If you are coming direct to the sheep and you are a shepherd, the Holy Spirit will open the door for you. I think the question that Jesus Christ was answering to the Pharisees is that after doing a miracle of opening an eye of somebody who was born blind, Christ is telling them that I am the life giver. Not only in this life, but in the life to come. So therefore, Christ proceeds by saying in verse 4, verse 3 still, and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. When he comes in, Christ will call you by your name and he will lead you out. Leading you out to where? He, lead me to, he leads me to the green pastures. He will come in, he will call me by name and he will lead me out. It reminds me that this man knows where the pasture is and he will lead me to the green pastures. In verse 4 he says, And when he brings out his sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice, and they will by no means follow 
a stranger. Those who have been with the Lord, those who have understood the Savior, they understand his voice. They know his voice. <clears throat> they walk with him. When Christ speaks, they understand him. And they will by no means follow a stranger. They can differentiate the voice of Satan from the voice of Jesus Christ. When they are faced with challenges in the family and they are feeling that two voices are speaking, there is one voice to commit sin and another voice to persevere. They can differentiate the voice of a stranger and they will by no means follow a stranger. So Christ is saying, those who are mine, they know me, they understand me, they hear my voice, they will never follow a stranger. Then he tells them, he tells them in verse 7, then Jesus said to them again, most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. He is telling all of us, nowhere else you can find a way out except through the door. And he's saying, I am the door. You are refusing to accept me and I am the door through the sheep. Through to the sheep. So Christ is insisting that they understand him. And in verse 9, as we jump, it says, Christ is saying, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling He who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leave, leaves the sheep and flees. I would want to repeat that part so that we get it. Christ is saying, that is verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not on the sheep, he sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees away. Christ is saying, a good shepherd would take all his interest on the sheep. I am the good shepherd, I am not a hired servant. A hired servant, when wolf is coming, will see that his own life is in danger and will run away. He is running away because he is not the owner of the sheep, but he has been hired. So he is running away. He doesn't care whether the sheep is in danger. So he will stick with the sheep even unto death. When David, David was a young boy, but he came when the Philistines were 
fighting with the Israelites, and there was this great giant Goliath that defied the army of God for 40 days. And when he just took some, some food to the brothers, where the brothers were fighting, he saw this man and he was wroth. And he said, what will be given to a man who will kill this man? And he was told that King Saul had offered something. Then he said, let no one's heart faint because I will go and fight him. And Saul was told what David had said and he was very happy. So Saul said, bring the man who is going to fight Goliath. And David was brought to, to Saul. When he saw David, he saw a very small boy. By the way, you know, if this, you allow this boy to go and fight, you will be defeated. And when you are defeated, the whole nation is defeated. It is a great risk. So Saul is really fearing to risk the life of the nation. And he tells David in a polite manner, Boy, you see you are very young, but this man has been a man of war since his youth. David said, your servant was a shepherd and was keeping sheep in the wilderness. And when a lion came, when a bear came, I took them by the beard and I struck them. And I saved a sheep from its jaws. He will be like one of them. David said. What is David saying? When a bear came, when a lion came, they would better kill me rather than kill the sheep. I offered my life to die for the sheep in the wilderness. That is what David is saying. And that is why Christ is saying, I am the good shepherd. I am not hired. I am ready to lay my life for the sheep. A hireling will see the wolf coming and will run away because a hireling is not the owner of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling. He is of pay and does not care about the sheep. Then Christ comes comes back to say, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I am known by my sheep. I know the people who trust me and the people who trust me, they know me. There is a large congregation. I understand each one but all those people who are coming before me and they trust me, they understand my ways. So they spoke like that. Christ expressed to them this. The reason is because they rejected him. But he is convincing them that there is no any other door 
you will pass through. Except by me. By the way, I am the shepherd. I am the one giving you eternal life. So after telling them that, they had a lot of debate. debate. I think it's verse 21 that is telling us that they have a, had a lot of debate. It is verse 20, 19, that says, Therefore, there was a division again among the Jews because of the sayings, of these sayings, and many of, these, of, of them said, He has a demon. And he is mad. Why do you listen to him? You are listening to a madman. You see, that's, that one is a total rejection. They are rejected. He is still talking to them. They are still rejecting. And saying Jesus Christ is mad. Then do you know what happens? Verse 21 is saying, others said, those are not the words of one who has demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? The way we see him talk, this man is not mad. And when we see the things he has done, this man is sent from God. Then, he proceeds in verse 22, it proceeds in verse 22 and say that it was a feast and they went to the feast in Jerus Jerusalem the same time, same discourse in verse 23, and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, how long do you keep us in doubt? How long do you keep us in doubt? Meaning that when they were debating themselves and someone, some people are saying he's mad, and others said, no, anyone who is mad cannot be able to give somebody an eye. Then the discourse uh, continues The, Pharise the, the Jews come before him and they ask him now a strict question. For how long will you put us in darkness? It is like you are the son of God and you are not saying it and how long will we be wondering whether you are the one or not? If you are the one, tell us plainly. Verse 25 says, Jesus answered them, answered them and said, I told you and you do not believe. Is that a very nice answer? You wanted him to say it plainly. Is that thing not plain? I had told you, but you did not believe. What else do you want me to do? The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Even the one I gave the eyes, that is a witness that I am from the Father. You see, they pushed Jesus that... Just in this chapter, the seven I am's that are in the book of John, two of them are found here. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. Apart from the others that before Abraham was, I am. Another one, I am the bread that came from heaven. Another one, I am the true vine. Another one, which is call again today is that he said, I am the resurrection and the life. 
That one is also very important to our study today. Christ told them in verse 25, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. I am interested in verse 26. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep, as I said to you. Christ is telling the Jews, the reason you can't understand this one is because you are not my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. The reason you have a struggle to understand the problems that you are going through is because you are not his sheep. The reason why you are failing to understand why you have to go through a test that you are going through is because you are not his sheep. My sheep know my voice. They will not have a struggle. The reason why you are always complaining about God not doing is because you are not a sheep because you can't follow his steps. By the way, the reason why you cannot change your moral standards and you know, you think you can never change is because you are not a sheep. The reason why you can never change your dressing style, it must always be an immoral type, is because you are not a sheep. If you are a sheep, it would be easy. You would understand it. You will be willing to transform. He says, same verse 26, he says, but you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. There are three words there that to me are very important. My sheep hear my voice. The word hear. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. That is another powerful one. I know them. And they follow me. That word that God is telling us that they hear my voice, who we can understand it that we can understand his sound. We can get the sound. We can understand his language. We can understand his dialect. We can understand his utterances. We can understand his tone. We may understand his blasts. You didn't get the last one. You can understand his blasts. When you are on the wrong and he blasts you, you will hear it. When you are moving away from him and he rebukes you, you will hear him rebuking you. They hear me. He is telling them, you are not of my sheep. That is why you are struggling to understand. Because my sheep, they hear me. When I talk to them, when I have blessed them, they understand that and they rejoice in me. When they go wrong and I rebuke them, they understand me. 
they hear my voice. When they sin and I bring unto them punishment, they really accept what is coming from the Lord. Because they, understand, they know my utterances. They understand the language in which I speak to them. My sheep, they, know, they, they hear me. And then Christ is again saying, and I know them. Christ is telling you, I understand them. When they are down, I understand when they feel sad, I understand them. When they are encouraged, I understand them. When they are having no peace, I understand them. Or you can even translate, the, translate it and say, I am acquainted with them. When they are shedding tears, I understand their tears. When they are in pain, I understand their pain. My sheep, I know them. I am acquainted with their grief. When they are grieving, I understand what is in their heart. Then he says, and they follow me. In all situations where we will be with my sheep, my sheep will be following me. They will be walking with me. Another word I can call it, they accompany me. They will make sure they accompany me as a shepherd to where I am taking them. My sheep will accompany me to Jerusalem. My sheep will accompany me to the new Jerusalem. I know my sheep hear my voice. I know them. And they follow me. Meaning that we will accompany Jesus. Whatever the situation, whatever the challenge, we understand him and we will be willing to follow him. And it, after saying that in verse 27, he comes to verse 28, but I'll just read straight from 27 and 28. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. You know, some verses in the Bible are just beautiful. Even when you just read them without explaining, they are just beautiful. Christ is telling, who is Christ talking to, by the way? He is talking to these Jews who are refusing to accept that Christ is the Son of God. So here he is telling them that if you, if you are really my sheep, you will hear my voice, I will know you, and you will follow me, and if you do that, if you believe, if you believe, I will lead you to eternal life. I give them. I give. If you look at it, it's like not a conditional. Condition is there, yes, for believing. But it is not something that might or might not happen. It is definite in saying, I will give them eternal life. Those who will hear my voice, Christ says, I am giving you, I have given you, it is present continuous. I give them eternal life. 
Those who are accepting the Savior, he is saying, I am your shepherd. I give you eternal life. And he says, and they shall never perish. Let me, that, that, that word translated as never, in the original language, it is not one word, but there are two words. They have only translated one word. And the reason why they have translated one word is because if translated all of them, they will mean the same thing. Never is a negation. And the other one also is a negation saying no. No! Never! And it is the strongest kind of negation. Christ is saying in that verse 28, I give them eternal life and they will not, never perish. Meaning, we can always say, certainly they will never perish. Surely they will never perish. Those who hear my voice, they will know, they will not, they will never perish. That one is telling you that this salvation that Christ is talking about is sure. The title of our sermon is saying, safe in his hand. The title of our sermon is saying, safe in his hand. Christ is saying, those who are accepting me, they will not, never perish. Those who are following me, certainly they will never perish. Eternal life is yours. And because you hear his voice, he is saying that you will never follow a stranger because you don't understand the language of a stranger. When a stranger is coming to you and telling you, have immoral associations, you will never follow a stranger. When a stranger is coming to you and telling you, break your family, you will never follow a stranger because you don't understand the language of a stranger. Because you know the shepherd. Only his voice you understand. That is why in this verse 28 it is saying, I give them And I give them eternal life. And I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. I've just slowed down. We have not finished. They shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. You didn't get that one. Christ is saying, those who are believing in me, no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. I have put them here. I have given them full protection. No one, no one will snatch them out of my hand. I was struggling to understand the meaning of snatch. Snatch them. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Then I thought it could be something that is decisive and sudden. Somebody is coming suddenly to snatch us out of our Savior's hand. Christ is saying no, never. No one can come suddenly and snatch us out of his hand. But that one is still not enough. Snatching could also be 
an open use of force to take us out of his hand. Open demonstration of force. Can the devil come and forcefully remove us from the hands of Jesus? Christ says, no one will snatch you out of my hand. I understand the strength of the devil. He is just an angel I created. He has no power. Even in an open demonstration of strength, the devil cannot start snatch you out of my hand. Deuteronomy 33 verse 3 is saying, His holy ones are safe in his hands. His holy ones are safe in his hands. No one can come to us and snatch us from the hands of Jesus. Jesus is persuading us, children of God, that sometimes life might be challenging. But trust me, I am the shepherd. Accept that I help you look for the green pasture. No wonder someone in the psalmist, the, in, in the book of Psalms, someone just said, he looked at all these things and he just concluded, concluded that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. He will keep me. He will protect me. Someone is telling me as choristers are coming that I want to hear the voice of the Lord. In all the challenges that I have been going through, I am going through I want to hear the voice of the Lord. Some of you would be willing to come forward for a prayer after the song. So you can be coming forward. But any of us who is saying, Lord, I want to hear your voice as you talk to me, and in your hands I will be safe. Please be standing up. Anyone who is telling the Lord, I want to be hearing your voice and I will be safe. Just the same thing, any one of us is still feeling that you need prayers, that you may hear the Lord's voice, you may get powers to hear the Lord's voice and you want to be coming to the pulpit for prayers. Please, can I see you? You want to be hearing the voice of the Lord. The Lord will be able to keep you safe. You understand between you and your God and you are praying, Lord, help me much more hear your voice so that I may trust you the more. Please come forward. As choristers are going to sing, choristers, please come forward. Our last song. Someone is saying, I would want to hear the voice of the Lord. Such that it will help me be safe in his hands. You will be coming also as we sing. It is for your prayer life, for your spiritual life, you would want to depend upon the voice of the Lord that he talks to you, you understand him, you obey him, you know that the distance between you and him, whether be it, whether a bigger distance, a smaller distance between you and your Savior, you are telling the Lord, I want you to help me to hear your voice, to follow you, I have challenges in my life and I want to follow you. It is not a call for baptism. 
It is a call for your spiritual life that we can pray for your life that the Lord may be able to transform you and change you. I think it is song number 538. We can sing. <laughs>